Okay guys, uh, welcome to the Friday Waffle and for once it's uh, hopefully getting put out on a Friday um, I'm, uh, I've got quite a quiet quiet day or a quiet night tonight because uh, well, my wife's downstairs but my daughter is away for a sleepover so uh, hi, you always get a bit, of, a bit of peace and quiet anyone that's got any young kids will know it's uh, full time Dad, can I get a drink of juice? Can I get a packet of crisps? It's up and down the whole time, but uh, I was probably just the same when I was a kid. So, anyway guys, Friday at last. Uh, it's been an absolute sod of a week. Um, it really has. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm delighted it's uh, Friday. I don't have what have I got on this weekend. Um, tomorrow there's a thing called a park park run and it's basically it's a it's a kind of global thing um i think it's not even just in the uk it's in europe as well it's basically it's organized the uh, 5k races um they're all over all over europe excuse me all over the uk i should say and you basically they're completely free it's a 5k which is about uh, 3.1 miles um, it's a, a set course and it's the same course every single week and basically you turn up and you run it and you have this uh, this barcode thing which uh, you get scanned at the end of the race so it gives you your kind of time in that but it's completely free and it's, it's, it's a good excuse to get out and run so I've got that tomorrow morning uh, nothing else planned oh excuse me I'll, you can probably tell uh, if you're having late nights <coughs> One of my, I'm not one for making New Year's resolutions because if you want to do something, why the hell do you leave it to the 1st of January? People that say, yeah, I'm going to get fit, I'm going to join a gym on the 1st of January. Well, you know, if you want to do it, do it now. Don't leave it to the bloody end of the year or the beginning of the new year. So, uh, but the only one thing I want to try and do is get earlier nights because uh, I think especially over the, uh, over the Christmas period, it was getting to the ridiculous stage. I was going to bed at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, which is just silly and uh, I've kind of been carrying that in a wee bit since going back to work you know um, going to sleep at you know, one o'clock in the morning and you just wake up knackered so I think that's my problem but uh, aye so that's that not being up to too much um, what was I going to say what was I going to say I just uh, <laughs> now I apologise now because I realise that there's a lot of people probably worse off than myself but the job position, um, to let you understand, the last time I got a pay rise was 2007, which would be nine years, well it was about eight years ago, that was the last time I got a pay rise, uh, and then I moved to this new company under the two pay regulations uh, last year, I think it was, yeah, or the year before, I should say, October 2014, but anyway, um, you've probably, if you follow my videos, you'll know you know, I keep going on about how busy the job is, although I do enjoy it, but it is mega, mega busy. But uh, yeah, I got a letter today telling me my pay rise. It's the first pay rise I've been given in, since 2007. And uh, they're giving me £233 of a pay rise, which if you work out, I work, I get four weeks holidays. So that's 48 weeks a year of work. Uh, I work five days a week. So if you work out 48 times 5, whatever that comes to, and you, uh, you divide that into £233, it actually works out at nine, uh, 97 pence a day pay rise I've been given. <laughs> Just, uh, it's, you know what, I'd actually have preferred, it sounds stupid, but I would have probably preferred it if they hadn't given me anything, because then that way you say, well, I've not had a pay rise, but as it is, they've given me a pay rise. But that, to me, just shows... Uh, that shows you how much they appreciate you, giving you 97 pence pay increase. It's absolutely pointless, absolutely pointless. But anyway, I've got a job and there's lots of people that don't have, so I'm very grateful for that. But, uh, I, um, you've, uh, if you watch the news, you wouldn't have uh, missed some of the, sort of the sad news that's happened over the last uh, sort of week. In particular, uh, a couple of deaths of people who were, they weren't close to me, but people who were very, 
you know, the part of my growing up, and I'm obviously talking about a uh, Lemmy, um, what do you call it, main singer, lead singer in Motorhead, and the other day there, David Bowie. Now, I'm a, a rock fan, I love heavy metal music, but I can't say I was a fan of Lemmy. Um, I, I wasn't a fan of Motorhead, it was a wee bit too kind of, bit too, I don't know, too loud for me, wasn't really keen on it. But I watched, somebody had actually recorded um, a service for Lemmy, and all these guys, um, I mean Gene Simmons was there, he was at the front, Ozzy Osbourne was there. People like his road, his roadie, his uh, manager, the crew, that kind of stuff. Slash out of well, Guns N' Roses, soon to be Guns N' Roses again, because apparently him and Axl Rose have made up and they're going to go back touring. Um, he was saying his piece, various things, um, and it's what is really, really obvious is just what an absolute nice guy he was. You know, according to everybody that spoke, now I know they would probably see that anyway, but he was a gentleman. I mean, he was married for years. I mean, I think, well, he was, I think he must have got divorced, whatever, but he apparently he was a very, very straight up and down guy. You know, he, he didn't suffer fools gladly, but he, he, according to what people were saying, he never, ever took advantage of his position. I mean, I can only imagine what opportunities must come your way when you're a lead singer of a heavy metal band I mean uh, <laughs> you know you can only imagine and uh, yeah but apparently he was the type of person that he, he treated everybody with respect in fact what was what I thought was really nice um, I'm a big fan of Metallica now Lars I don't know his second name he's he plays drums for Metallica now he actually um, before he was with Metallica he went to see I think he stood outside uh, a gig, a Motorhead gig, and as Lemmy was coming out, he went up and spoke to him, and apparently Lemmy was like really friendly with him, and he kind of got to know him, and you know, Lars said that this was a guy who was at the top of his game, but he always made a point of including people, he never ever, you know, it didn't matter if you were like somebody standing outside wanting an autograph, he was the type of person that would always give you time and he says because of the influences that uh, Lemmy gave him he says he ended up starting a band and that led to Metallica and now they're one of probably the most successful bands in the world but uh, yeah I was I was saddened to hear that I mean I think as you get older I mean it's not a fact yeah it's a fact as you get older you know my both my parents are gone now and as you get older you do certainly have to face up to death a lot more and it's it's depressing, you know, it's not a happy thing. And what's what makes it sad is when people who are part of you growing up, I mean, I, I make, I mean, I make a living, I don't charge for this, but I, my whole YouTube channel is virtually based on nostalgia because of, the, you know, the, the happy memories that I get um, with video games. And it's the same with music. I mean, you know, Motorhead and then, well, obviously David Bowie. I was I was particularly upset when I heard that David Bowie had died um, through cancer once again. Seems to take most people. And Alec Alan Rickman died just was it yesterday I think it was again cancer. Um, oh bloody hell yeah! It's just as you get older, it does become something that you have to face up to a lot more, and it's it's just another wee bit of your memory getting chipped away. Well, that's not true because your memory will always be there, but. You know, another little part of your childhood, your growing up, isn't there anymore. And, uh, aye, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. Now, I do know that Steve Benway has apparently put out a video um, talking just about David Bowie's death. Uh, he did say that it was one of the hardest videos he's ever made. Um, I've not watched it yet, so I'm going to watch that after I finish recording this. Um, I wasn't I wasn't a big Bowie fan. I mean, I wasn't a fan of his music. I have to say, but he always came across as a nice guy. He was one of these guys. He absolutely kept himself to himself. You know, he never really saw any pictures of him in the paper, um, and he even carried that that privacy into his death. Apparently, the day after he died, he was take you know his body was taken away and he was cremated with absolutely no fuss, there was no family, no friends, nothing at all, no press there, so, you know, he, he basically, uh, he, he just, even in death, he lived this very, very private life, um, 
but yeah, it's very, very sad. I mean, certainly the world is a lesser place, uh, music-wise, it's a lesser place without two people who, you know, they brought so much to music. I mean, if you spoke to any, uh, if you spoke to any rocker, any heavy metal guy, any of the greats, they, I would virtually guarantee that they would probably mention Lemmy um, as being an influence. I mean, you had guys like Jimi Hendrix, Lemmy, you know, he was a, he was an absolute icon, he was a, a beacon of light in heavy metal music. And it's the same with David Bowie, I mean, he reinvented himself so many times. He had all these uh, sort of personas, you know, the different characters, Ziggy Stardust and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there was a few songs that I liked, um, but I said I wasn't a massive David Bowie fan, you know, music-wise, but I, I've got absolutely every respect in the world to what he actually did. I mean, he he just he was never afraid to, to be himself. I mean, you know, back in the day when, dare I say, you know, like homosexuality was obviously frowned upon, he was he used to wear makeup and that kind of stuff. So he was he wasn't afraid to to be himself, um, you know. And I've I just tipped my hat to the guy. So yeah, it's the music uh, industry is a far lesser place with the loss of these two guys, but yeah, um, very depressing, but uh, <laughs> these things happen, and I'm going to pause that a second. Okay, following on from on the music theme, um, I've, there's a guy I used to, uh, a guy I used to, Pal, but I didn't pal about with him, I used to pal about with this guy's pal, if that makes any sense. In other words, I knew of this guy, but I wasn't friends with him. And then I was on a night out, um, well, just before Christmas time, and this guy, his name is Andy. Andy was there, and uh, I didn't, you know, I hadn't really spoke to him at all since, I don't know, 1987 or whatever it was, but cut a long story short, um, had a great night, and I realised, you know, this guy is an absolute top bloke. Uh, now Andy plays in a heavy metal band, or a rock band I should say, he's the lead singer and lead guitarist, or he plays the bass actually. No, I'm talking pish, he plays the lead guitar. He uh, invited me to one of his gigs through in Edinburgh uh, during the week, so I jumped on the train, went through, and uh, I saw Andy's band play, I think they played six, six or seven songs, and then there was another group that were on, this young sort of heavy metal band, they were excellent as well, and then there was a group called Marco Mendoza. Now, I'd never heard of them, and it turns out that Marco Mendoza is, he was the basis for uh, Thin Lizzy, Phil Lynott, you know, the boys are back in town, um, and also White Snake, Richard, uh, what do you call it, Coverdale. Um, yeah, they were, uh, they were, you know, two epic rock bands. Sorry, I've just got a bloody itchy foot, but kind of dry skin in the top of it, and it gets so... Friggin' itchy. Uh, David Coverdale, oh, I'm talking about Richard Coverdale. Yeah, massive group, but this guy, he was the basis for them. He's played with all the greats, he played with Lemmy, um, he's you know, played with Guns N' Roses, he's played with all these classic uh, rock bands, Ted Nugent, all these guys. And uh, I'd never heard of him. He's from San Diego in the States, and uh, he looked like your typical looked like your typical rocker, he looked a bit like Alice Cooper, he had the kind of eye makeup on and the really dark, dark, obviously kind of um, dyed black hair, but uh, he looked like a typical heavy metal rocker and uh, oh my goodness, see when this guy sung, unbelievable, he, you know, <laughs> he was playing, there was him and there was this uh, Danish lead guitarist who was absolutely just incredible and there was a guy on drums. The music was like sort of 70s rock, your kind of deep purple, bad influenced kind of sort of sound. You know, it wasn't like your heavy metal. It was like rock from the 70s. But then when this guy started singing, bloody hell, I've never heard a guy with such a good voice. He could hit the really high notes and he could hit the really low notes and he was singing like jazz and blues and Oh, my goodness. I mean, I only paid, it was £10 to get into this thing. It was a pub, and there was probably, I would say there was probably maybe 50, 60 people in the in the pub watching this. And, uh, I mean, I probably got about, I don't know, three hours or more of music. And, uh, I mean, this guy, Marco Mendoza, absolutely fantastic. If you like rock music, Google him. 
um, he's absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, it was a, it, I felt really honoured to actually be along there and witness. I mean, the guy, the guy as he was playing the guitar was walking through the crowd, and at the end of it, he was standing, and I went up and I just, <laughs> I gave the guy a hug, and uh, I said, "Well, any, uh, any starstruck rock uh, heavy metal fan would say." Um, I told him that he fucking blew my mind, man. <laughs> That's what I told him. And he did. I mean, he absolutely did blow my mind. He was just phenomenal. Uh, and I shook his hand. So, yeah, that was a, that was excellent. Really, really good. So, yeah. Um, what else? I've not got... I've not got a hell of a lot written down um, to talk about. Games-wise, have I been playing any games? Um... Have I been playing any games? Well, I have. In fact, yeah, I'm going to now lead on to the next, the one and only thing I've got written down here. Um, what I bought, now I did mention it last week, I think, I did mention it, yeah. Um, <laughs> I managed to sell my iPhone 6 to a rather uh, wonderful person by the name of Lactobacillus Prime. Um, my mate Mark, who has an excellent YouTube channel, um, who people that talk about the internet as being uh, impersonal and all this kind of thing, well, I'll give you a story. I put my, I advertised my iPhone on Gumtree, which is a kind of local UK sort of selling thing, you know, it's free to use. I posted it on that, I posted it on uh, eBay. Um, I posted it on a local Facebook for sale page and uh, I got absolutely nothing. Well, I'll tell you a lie, I had a few people want me to want me to send it to their uncle in uh, in Africa um, and they'd pay the money. In fact, they'd actually give me more than I was looking for. So uh, I was like, uh, no thank you, it's cash on delivery. But I mentioned in my waffle last week that my phone 6 was for sale and uh, Mark contacted me and uh, bought it. And uh, I posted it, what day did I post it? Was it Wednesday? And uh, it arrived today, was it Tuesday? No, it was Wednesday, yeah. I posted it two days ago. And Mark has now got his phone. So uh, there you go, that's uh, that's service for you. And uh, yeah, but the, the thing is, you know, I was delighted to be able to sell. I mean, it was an expensive phone, so it was great to be able to uh, sell to... You know, I mean, I, I regard Mark as a, a good friend, um, and yet I've only met him the once. But, uh, you know, he was delighted with his purchase, I was delighted getting the sale. Um, and there was absolutely, I mean, Mark sent me the money. You know, if I had been some bad person, I could have just kept the money and away you go sort of thing. But it just shows you the trust that's built up with people. So this YouTube thing, it's not as uh, artificial or as false as some people make out, you know. Don't get me wrong, there's always plenty of people who are out there willing to rip people off, but, uh, you know, it is possible through this medium to actually make proper friendships, and I think I've done that. Um, so, yeah, that was that. But, uh, I anyway, I sold my iPhone 6. Um, I got myself, where is it? <clears throat> got myself this thing, which is really rather nice. It's a, what's it, a Samsung... Uh, in a second, a Samsung S3. Oh, so I'm looking at a missed call from my daughter, but it was half past twelve today. A Samsung S3, uh, S6, I should say. But let's have a look. You can see there. It's it's a nice phone. I'm not going to do a pickup or any of that bollocks because uh, let's have a look. Um, arcade perfect. So there you go. There's. Excellent sound. Right, okay, this is the Apple II version. Really, really nice sound. Really, play. really nice phone. Got to say though, I mean, the iPhone 6, I love to bits. Um, and I would have kept it bar for one thing. I wanted one of these. <laughs> this is the VR, the Samsung VR headset. Now what happens is uh, it's actually really light. You can see there. It's got, obviously, you put your head in there. What happens is, the phone goes, it clips inside here. It actually clips at the side here. And then, when you put it in, it, it's got a wee connector part in there. When that plugs in, the headset kicks uh, kicks in. Um, and you basically get to look at VR stuff. 
you know. I'm going to I'm going to do a main Meister look at for that thing later on anyway. So and I've also also picked up myself a, a controller, an Android uh, Bluetooth controller. But uh, oh my goodness, what have I been playing? I've been playing virtual reality. Um, <laughs> I have had a shot of an Oculus Rift, which uh, I'm sure you all know what it is. It's a VR thing. Now the, the biggest problem with the Oculus Rift is the price. Um, it just they've just released the consumer version. Now I think it's I think it's more than five hundred pounds. But the big but is you need an absolute behemoth, a monster PC to be able to run run it properly. Because obviously, if you it, it has to produce it has to have the same game, two images. So it's basically having to can you run the same game twice type thing. Um, so you need a monster PC. So really, to get the Oculus Rift, Rift up and running, you would really need to spend about twelve fifteen hundred pounds, I would imagine, um, which I wasn't going to do. Now that thing there, I didn't mention it. That Samsung VR thing is eighty quid, and uh, it's. I'm not going to go into too much detail because, like I said, I want to do a separate video for it. But all I can see is it's absolutely blown my mind of just what's possible out there. You can watch films in a cinema, gigantic screen. You can, you know, you're at the beach. Um, my favourite one, I mean, my, my, my daughter's pals were over the other day there. My favourite one for scaring kids, or scaring anybody, is uh, you're inside a shark tank. And you've got this, there's a white shark swimming about outside. And uh, the first time I put this thing on my head, obviously you can imagine it, you've got this thing on, and no matter where you turn, you're actually in, in the game. Um, the first time I, I went into this shark cage and this white shark came up, up to the bars, I absolutely shat myself. I mean, it's phenomenal. <laughs> That's all I can say. The graphics are mind-blowing. I mean, don't expect Oculus Rift HD standard because you're paying 80 quid. You're not paying £1,500 or £500, whatever it is. You're paying 80 quid and it's running through a, a smartphone. But uh, you know, I'm not one of these. Uh, I'm not one of these like video audio buffs. I mean, there's people who will not watch a film unless it's 1080p or whatever the hell it is. I couldn't care less. I watch films. I mean, DVDs are absolutely fine. I've seen me watching films that are, you know, um, not the greatest quality, shall we say? Um, but uh, I would say that the I would say that the uh, the standard you get on this thing. I mean, probably. I would probably say it's between maybe slightly less than DVD quality. I'd probably say it is DVD quality, but you've got to imagine you've got this phone and it's literally, you know, I don't know, that close. It's about that close from your eyes, so you're looking up at really close. And what it does is obviously these things that you're looking through, it magnifies it to make it look enormous. So you do get, it's called a screen door um, issues. Basically, you've got pixels, and if you imagine all these circles together, there's going to be a wee space in between the circles, and that's what's called the barn door effect. So when you're looking up so a screen so close, you can sometimes see through the graphics, but I've got to say, I really don't think it's a problem at all. Unless you were really looking for it, you're being really Mr. Picky from Mr. Picky Land. Um, it's not an issue for me, you know what I mean? But I mean, the quality, as I said, is it's probably slightly less than DVD quality, but it's staggering. I can't, I can't uh, emphasize too much just how incredible that, that thing is. If you do happen to have a Samsung S6 phone, um, or is it a Note 5, I think it's called, then you absolutely, in fact, what to do if you do have an S6 phone, Samsung S6 phone, pause this video right now, switch it off, get onto samsung.co.uk, get yourself one of these ordered right now for £80. I swear on my life, it is the best. It's probably the purchase, the one purchase that I've made in the last 20 years that I've been most excited about, and it's just blown my mind just what that thing can do. It is absolutely phenomenal. It really, really is. So yeah, I've been playing uh, I've been playing quite a few games in it. 
Now apparently you can, uh, <coughs> you can, what do you call it, you can use uh, Google, was it Chromecast? Yeah, Chromecast is where you can, you can basically send the image on your phone on a TV. Apparently you can do that with that um, VR headset. So what I'm going to try and do, I mean I, I've actually done a, I did a, a, when I got that headset thing, I did a, an unboxing video. Um, I've recorded a wee bit of it and uh, what I was going to do is, you know, once I've uh, figured out how to record the game, I was going to put it on and let you see the TV of what I'm actually doing. But uh, I've not had a, sh a chance to actually do that yet. So I'll give that a go. Um, whether it's successful or not, I don't know, but I'll certainly give it a go. But that will be coming in a separate video. But uh, honestly, if you've got a Samsung a S6 phone, you absolutely need to buy one of these. I mean, I don't have any regrets getting that phone. The phone itself is fantastic. Um, if the Apple, uh, if the iPhone had been able to run the VR thing, I wouldn't have bothered getting a new phone. But uh, it doesn't. So I was delighted to to go and buy a brand new phone to be able to play it. But it's just mind blowing. That's all I can say. So uh, you can look out for the video hopefully in the next uh, the next few days. Um, just going to pause it. Right, okay, um, <clears throat> I've only got, I've only got one question, um, and again it's, it's from, uh, from Kev down the rabbit hole, cheers Kev, uh, but really, you know, Kev's completely reliable, he always uh, gives me questions, um, which I appreciate because some days I do run out of stuff to talk about. Right, what's Kev saying here, um, for the Friday Waffle, hi Alan, can I ask if you've ever been about to publish a video? only to see someone you've subscribed to just publish one in the same subject. That just happened to me. What's your advice? Delay putting out your video, put a disclaimer at the beginning or just point yours, post yours anyway and hope no one notices. I'm waiting a few days before I put mine up now. Um, I would say you yeah, absolutely just post it Kev. I mean the thing is mate, none of us make any money. I mean there's a couple of guys that you know monetize their videos but you know, few and far between it, you're talking pennies. Um, this is a hobby, it's just a hobby. I don't, if somebody wanted to bring out a video called Arcade Perfect My Arse, then there's absolutely nothing I could do about it. I would probably probably be a wee bit pissed off if they were, if it was obvious they were just completely ripping off my idea. But at the end of the day, what we do, what we all do here is a bit of fun. It's a hobby, we don't make money out of it. It's just for a laugh, you know, we do it because we enjoy it and other people hopefully enjoy watching the videos. Um, none of us own any rights to anything. I mean, one thing, and hence the reason I have bloody virtually none game-wise to talk about in a Friday Waffle, it's, it's difficult. I do think there's a, <coughs> excuse me, I do think there's a, a finite sort of number of things you can talk about when it comes to video games, especially kind of classic video games like what we're all into. Um, yeah, you can talk about, there's millions of games out there, but it's sometimes difficult to talk about different things or come up with fresh ideas. I mean, I'm always, as you probably know, I'm always trying to come up with something a wee bit different um, from the norm. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Um, I mean, I've never, I don't think I have ever... Uh, I don't think I've ever went to publish a video and then noticed that somebody else has beat me to it. What I have had, and it kind of annoyed, annoyed me a wee bit until I thought to myself, well, I don't own that. Um, what the hell was it? Yeah, it was uh, Arcade Perfect My Arse. As people know, I uh, I play an arcade game and then I, I kind of take a look at all the, the sort of home conversions. Now, through you know YouTube, I realise that there's there are other channels that have done that. I can't remember what it's called. There's another channel that's very very similar. The only thing is they don't talk. It's just point at the camera. They don't talk or anything, which I always find a bit dull. To be honest, I mean, there's no personality in a video when you're not talking. But uh, when I started, I can't remember what the hell it was. What game was it? One particular game. But uh, when I just started doing the arcade perfect my arses. Um, another YouTuber started doing the same sort of thing 
and it kind of, it did annoy me a wee bit, I thought, oh wait a minute, that's what I'm doing, I can't remember, was it one particular game that that same person done? But I just, I remember thinking, this is quite a unique thing, and then one of the people that I kind of subscribed to me, I think they subscribed to me, they put out the same thing, they didn't call it Arcade Perfect My Arse, they just basically done a kind of compare video type thing, um, and he looked at, you know, quite a few versions of this uh, arcade game, and I, wee, I got a wee bit annoyed at that, but then I thought to myself, wait a minute, I don't, I've got no, I've got absolutely no right to any of that, you know, <laughs> it's a free, it's a free country, it's everybody for themselves, you know what I mean, um, so yeah, that, that annoyed me, but I had no right to it, and I eventually thought, well, fuck it, you know, at the end of the day, anybody is entitled to do whatever they want, I mean, the Friday uh, waffle, what I'm doing right now, is I've, I've always admitted that. It was uh, Steve Benway, Friday Talkie. That was my favourite video that he put out, and I was gutted like a lot of people when Steve stopped making it. And uh, so to try and come up with something a bit different, I called it the Friday waffle. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it seems that, I'm not saying I've got the monopoly in it, but you know, that's the Friday waffle is probably the, the thing that most people kind of know me for. Any of the sort of my fellow YouTubers that have subscribed to me, they know that I do the Friday Waffle, that's what I do. But there's plenty of other people, I mean there's quite a lot of other YouTubers, they, they now refer to these things as waffles. Again, I don't own the, I don't own that word, I don't own that phrase, people can call things what they want. But I'm kind of not even touching on what you're talking about here, Kev. Um, no, absolutely, if you've made a video and somebody just happens to post a, sim a similar video, by all means, you put it out there because, you know, it's not their intellectual property. That's the phrase I was looking for earlier on. It doesn't belong to them. You get it out there. Um, I mean, I've I've never been shy to copy, but to take ideas from other people. I mean, The Shadows knows, um, love his channel. He played Yolanda and, uh, what do you call it, that awful game. And just when I watched his video, I thought, that is a diabolical um, game, I need to play it. So, you know, and I did give a, me a mention, I mean, I always make a point, if I can't copy somebody's, get an idea, I'll invariably mention it, because I think that's only fair, you know, that's where I got the idea from. It was seen that game on the Shadows Knows um, YouTube channel, that I thought, I'm going to make my own video of it. So, I've kind of done that, um, and I'm sure he didn't, didn't mind me doing that. Um, there's been other things in the past, you know, I mean, the, the funny thing is, um, I have got, I bought that book, what's it called, uh, The Worst Games You've Probably Never Heard Of by Stuart Ashen, and uh, I've not read it, I've only, I've only read maybe two or three pages of it, but what, what was the game? Um, yeah, Mario Brewery, <laughs> I was playing that uh, last, was it this week? I think it was this week. I mean, <laughs> I've got to say, um, that video that I put out, it cheers me up in the end, and I hope it cheers up other people, because when I started playing it, I just could not stop laughing. It was just hysterically awful looking that I couldn't, I really couldn't stop laughing. Um, <laughs> the funny thing was, by the end of the video, I'd actually decided I liked the game. The game itself wasn't too bad. Um, what's really interesting is one of my mates, Matt, who is uh, an aficionado, aficionado of all things C64, what Matt doesn't know about the Commodore 64 is not worth knowing. I mean, Matt's got probably, I, I don't know, Matt will make, make Billy um, confirm this, he's got probably one of the biggest C64 collections of anybody in the world, um, you know. But uh, he was telling me that the guy that actually wrote that game, the Mario's Brewery, was only 14 years old, um, and that made me feel quite bad, I was kind of dissing the game, but the funny thing was, by the end of the video, I think I played it for 12 minutes, I was actually really enjoying it, it was actually quite a good game to play, it looked bloody awful, well, I mean, it didn't look awful, I think what made it so bad, <laughs> was the fact that there was absolutely zero animation in the main character, none animation at all, it was just basically the sprites slide along the, the screen. It was like uh, when you make a game, when one of these game designer things, you know, you don't bother with animation, you just get the, the sprite and you move it left and right, that's what this thing did. But uh, yeah, I played uh, that Mario Brewery, that was just me, you know, I just ha happened upon the game. 
And then, when I was reading that book with Stuart Ashens earlier on this week, he was mentioning that game, so people might be thinking, you've just gone in and read that about that game and made your video. Well, that's not the case. I'd actually made it. I'd never even heard the game until I made the video. And then, of course, when I read the book after it, um, Stuart Ashens had actually done a video. Or not done a video, he'd actually mentioned about how, how god-awful this game was. Um, so, no, absolutely, Kev. I mean... If you've got, a, if you've made a video, you get it put out there. It's different if you were, like I say, as if you were, you know, slagging somebody off or belittling somebody or whatever it is. But you know what I mean. There's none of us own the rights to anything. I mean, you know, just because I uh, bring a video out of me playing Manny at Minor doesn't mean that nobody else can do that because we don't own, we don't own these. Um, you know, so I absolutely. If you've got your video, never mind keeping it just get it out there um, that just uh, delete it out put a disclaimer the funny thing is uh, you're talking about a disclaimer a couple of my I was experimenting with uh, the the video software thing that I use and I, I figured out how to do a watermark now it's never it's not something that's ever really bored me I think I did it for a couple of videos and then I don't know I kind of forgot to do it again but it is something that I've kind of thought about what 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 is your opinion on that? Do you think do you think I should uh, put a little watermark, put my wee main meister logo in videos or something? I mean, like I said, I don't make any money out of this at all. And I've just said about you know if somebody decided they wanted to do something called you know that was the year that was. There's absolutely nothing I could do to stop them. But I would be pissed off if I went onto a YouTube channel. And lo and behold, it was my video on their channel. And there was no credit to me at all. The difficulty you've got is basically proving that that is your video. So maybe it is something I should think about. I mean, I don't make any money, so um, it's not like I'm, I'm going to lose anything. But I would be a bit pissed off, like I think anybody would, if I thought that other people were taking the credit for something that we've done. So should I put a wee bookmark? Not a bookmark. Should I put a wee... Uh, watermark at the bottom of my videos, I'm thinking the wee berserk character at the bottom right, something like that. I don't know, what's your thoughts? Is it something you should do? Is there any need to do that? Considering we're just a, we're just a hobby. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something I've thought about, Kev, but I've never really actually bothered about doing it. Um, just post you anyway. Yes, absolutely, Kev, go ahead, get it posted. Um, got to see, I absolutely loved your, uh, your Judge Dread. Um, Fantastic. Um, Kev has got a sort of an alter ego who does uh, makes videos as well. And I, uh, uh, hi, absolutely, go and check his channel out. So anyway, that is that is it, guys. Um, I, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. I, you've probably seen with the uh, with the channel. I, I don't stick to rigid schedules anymore. I always like to try and get a Friday, I'll always get the Friday waffle done whether it's on a Friday or a bloody Saturday or even a Sunday, I'll always get a Friday waffle out because um, that's just what I do but the rest of the time I just like to just wing it, you know what I mean, if I can be bothered, if I had a bit of spare time, um, I mean that arcade perfect my arse Arkanoid, I actually did that, I made that about two weeks ago during the Christmas and I thought I'll just keep it there and I'll put it out later on so that's what I've done. But uh, I, I'm not kind of, I'm not kind of restricting myself to. I've got to do that particular video in that particular day. I just make what I want to do. Um, I was actually recording a video last night with uh, with somebody, so that will be getting put out on. The, it'll be getting probably put out maybe Monday. We'll get that released. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That's it, guys. There's nothing else I really want to talk about. Um, no, I'm going to go away and get a cup of tea now. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Keep seeing it, guys. Uh, I do appreciate all your uh, all your support. It really is appreciated. You know, without without you guys watching these videos and commenting, I simply wouldn't do this, and I don't think any YouTuber would do it. So thanks for your support. Um, if you have, if you like if you like the video, please like it. If you have not subscribed to my channel uh, and you like what you see and you want to see more guff from a, an aging Scottish bloke then go and tick that wee uh, subscribe button, I would, uh, that would be fantastic. And uh, that is it guys, thank you very much for watching.
for watching my man Meister channel. Please feel free to like, comment or subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter.